I want to read from Proverbs, the 30th chapter, beginning with verse 18. And I'll also read from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 to 31. It's Proverbs 30, beginning with verse 18. This uh, message was born um, out of a dream that I had. Um, so I, I hope that I hope that I can convey it um, in the way that I felt it this morning. And I pray that it blesses someone today. I know that some of the things that I say in this house, even though it's probably not a topic that I've ever discussed with maybe... Well, I, I know I've discussed it with my kids, but it's not a topic that I've discussed with many people. But I have no doubt in my mind that some of the things that I say, that you'll say, oh, I've thought of that before. Amen. So uh, I pray today that the Lord will bless you. I mean, Proverbs, the 30th chapter, verse 18, says, there, will, there be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Again, I would read that part on verse 19. The way of an eagle in the air. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them which have no might, He increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The next few moments, I'd like to preach with your help and with the help of the Lord. I dreamed I could fly. Lord, we thank you today for this opportunity to gather together and hear your words. Lord, I pray today that someone, Lord, will be, will be strengthened. Someone would be encouraged, God, that your word would go forth because I know, Lord, that it will not return void. I pray that you would have your way and speak through me today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. You can be seated this morning. Since the beginning of time, man has been fascinated with the ability to fly. To fly was a superpower that was reserved for God and for angels, for arrows, for clouds, and for all manner of birds. God designed the birds so that they could soar above the earth and look down upon His wonderful creation. And man has ever been, and I say ever will be, envious of this ability that God gave to the birds. We strongly desire at times to sprout wings and to soar among the clouds. Who hasn't wanted to look down upon the snow-topped mountains and soar with the eagles. What man has not observed a hawk or an owl diving on their prey and wished that they had this amazing ability? Who has not observed great birds effortlessly gliding in the air on a windy day and wished for just a moment in time that they too could glide upon the wind? In fact, many authors in the Bible, reference flying from the very opening of Genesis chapter 1. Moses recorded a concept that to mankind seems like flying. In chapter 1 verse 2 he said, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Many Versions other than this King James Version render this as the Spirit hovering over the waters. Ancient storytellers who did not have the truth uh, or the full truth of God and they did not have the knowledge of the Almighty, 
They made tales and legends of gods and of mystical beings and even of men with the ability to fly. They thought that the gods rode across the heavens in chariots bringing the daylight. Greek mythology, Daedalus creates wings so that he and his son Icarus could fly and escape the island of Crete. And Daedalus warns Icarus and he says, don't fly too high and don't fly too low. If you fly too low, the moisture of the seas will weigh your wings down. And if you fly too high, the sun will melt the wax on the wings and the wings will fall apart. And Icarus, in his youthful exuberance, flies into the heavens and is carried away with his ability to fly. And he gets higher and higher and higher. And despite his father's warnings, the sun melts the wax and Icarus crashes into the sea and is drowned. Indeed, many of our famous inventors, people from the Renaissance, such as Leonardo da Vinci, uh, they were famous for their uh, their desire to fly, and he was Leonardo in particular was famous for his drawings of his flying machines. Over the ages, many uh, men and inventors have died and been injured in their attempts to fly. Many boys, some in my family, thought that they could build wings and jump off the housetop and fly, and they ended up with broken arms. Why? Because man has ever desired to fly. And ultimately, through the course of time, man built hot air balloons and gliders. And finally, uh, the Wilbur brothers, or the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, finally in 1903, they achieved powered flight. So man has continued in this vein, and we have built better and better aircraft and jet engines which go higher and faster, and we're never satisfied with the results. We're always pushing the boundaries, never satisfied with the status quo. And we've even, even achieved space flight. But even though we can experience flying in a machine, mankind still looks from the ground to the air and sees the birds soaring and we wonder what it would be like to feel the wind in our wings. What it would be like to soar in the blue skies and feel the sun shine down upon us. Indeed, even children dream when we sleep and oftentimes daydream in classrooms wondering what it would be like to fly. I can tell you that I was one such dreamer. As a child, I had vivid dreams. Oftentimes, I had recurring dreams. And one of my favorite, all-time favorite recurring dreams was flying. In my dreams, they varied, but I, sometimes I could jump really high. And when I would fall to the earth, it would not hurt me. And sometimes I could jump and float in the air for a long distance. And other times, I could just fly like a bird and soar. Almost like you see Superman soaring through the air. And other times I would just defy gravity in general. And oftentimes I would wake up with a feeling of exhilaration and exuberance. Feeling for a few fleeting moments as if I were on top of the world. And that anything was possible. Now I can tell you that I've even had this dream as an adult. A few weeks ago, I dreamed a dream again. And for just a few moments in that dream, I could fly. In that, in that dream, I was on a hilltop. And on that hilltop, I took off running. And I jumped. And I could soar. And I could float. But ultimately, I began to come down to earth and land. But when I woke up, I had such an exuberant feeling. I felt like my, feet, uh, like my feet were touching the ground. For a few moments after I woke up, I had such a feeling of excitement. Like anything was possible. And it took my mind back to when I was a child, before the, the weights and concerns of life weighed me down. And I felt like anything was possible. In Psalm, the 90th chapter, Moses wrote this, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all 
generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You swept them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you and our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or by reason of strength eighty. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you to teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Even though, this passage, what I took from this was even though our days are numbered and no one gets out of this thing alive. No one escapes the trouble, the toil, the circumstances of life. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Mankind has sinned and fallen from God. And yet, even though they are gone, one day we will fly away. One day this soul that inhabits our bodies will return to the man, to the God that created it. And ever will we be with the Lord. Psalm 55, David wrote, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and I moan because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they drop trouble upon me and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me and terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away and lodge in the wilderness, Selah. I would hurry to find shelter from the raging wind and the tempest. Like David, sometimes we know, I know that you like me, wish that you could take wing, sprout wings, and simply fly away from your troubles. But the sad truth is, there is nowhere to escape the troubles that are common to humanity. Society spends billions of dollars each year on vacations in an attempt to get away from the reality of responsibility and the problems of the day-to-day grind. We will spend our hard-earned money and sometimes use credit cards for money that we don't have just to get a little break from reality and spend a few days away from our troubles. Unfortunately, many unfortunate souls turn to substance abuse for a temporary escape from their Reality. Still others engross themselves in hobbies and in sports and in pastimes, all for the purpose of forgetting the world and its politics and destruction and troubles for just a little while. Still others look to the spirit of the holidays to get away from reality. And we decorate our house and we play uh, Christmas songs and listen to Christmas songs going down the road and make gingerbread houses and cook turkeys and, and do all sorts of things to forget the here and now just for a little while. All the while we are dreaming of flying. And though we dream of flying, no matter how bad we want it, the fact is that we mere humans 
cannot fly. We go to sleep and we dream of flying or we see the bird in the air and wish how I could soar with the birds and with the eagles. And yet, reality brings us down to earth and we realize that we are simply not designed to overcome gravity. We will never sprout wings and soar. We can't just fly away from our troubles. We can't ignore our troubles and count on them to simply vanish. Despite our attempts to procrastinate, to delay, to ignore, to spend, to overlook, to deny, to explain away, and to pretend, nothing we do gets us away from the fact that we must face the reality that is this fallen world. The problems and the cares, the concerns brought upon us by sin and fallen nature and our adversary. We can't just fly away from them. And we as if we didn't have enough problems, there is an adversary called Satan who desires to destroy us. Peter said this, 1 Peter 5, 6-9, through Humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. God cares for us. He cares for us. And though we desire, our desire is to be lifted up. Our desire is to be on high. But Peter says, humble yourself before God. Under yourself, under the mighty hand of God. And it's then that if we humble ourselves to God, it's then that He lifts us up. And we can cast our concerns and our worries and our health problems upon Him because it is He that cares for us. It's His hand that lifts us up. He went on to say, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I love that all these scriptures are grouped together. You could pick any one of them out and preach from them. But when you read them in context, Peter is saying, Cast your cares upon the Lord. Resist Satan in faith. And be known. let this be known to you, you're not the only one that's being afflicted. You're not the only one with cares and concerns. You're not the only one that wish they were soaring in the clouds. You're not the only one that's got burdens bowing you over and it feels like you're the, you can't pack them. But I want you to know today, if you're bent over carrying a heavy load, there is a God who's saying, give your cares to me. Give me your burdens for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's a God who wants to carry your concerns and your problems and your worries your anxieties and your fears and he wants to take them upon his able shoulders and help you God is our help amen he's a very present help in time of trouble did you not know that God is a very present help in time of trouble when I say he's a helper I'm not talking about the way I would use my sons to help me do a task If I'm painting a room and I need something, I may say to Brody, Brody, go out to the shop and get me a gallon of paint. And he would go and do my bidding and come back. Or I may say to Brayden, hey Brayden, go uh, get Dad that paintbrush over there. That's not the kind of help we're talking about. We're talking about a significant and indispensable help. A help that you cannot do without. A help that you cast your burdens upon. A help that there's no way that you can make it Without that help. That's the kind of help that God renders to us. I've discovered that the only real peace and joy and escape and refuge to be found in this world is through the help of the Lord. Psalm 63 and 6 through 8. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate upon thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Have you ever been there? 
Have you ever been laying in the quiet moments when you finally get still and the wheels of your mind begin to reflect upon the day, the week, the month, even your life, and you recognize that if it were not for the Lord, where would you be? If it wasn't for the upholding hand of God keeping you held up, where would you be? If it wasn't for the hand of the Lord reaching down into the miry clay and picking you up out of the pit, where would you be? If it wasn't for God picking you up out of your addictions, and out of your troubles and out of your mess where would you be if it wasn't for the Lord whose shoulder you cried upon when you were suffering and when you were hurting or when there was loss in your life when you were grieving for a lost loved one where would you be without the help of the Lord he says because thou hast been my help therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice in the shadow of the wings of the Almighty God. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholds me. I ask you today, are you pursuing the Lord? David said, he, my soul follows hard after thee. He's pursuing with everything that he's got. He's pursuing the Lord. With every ounce of energy that is in his being, his every thought is bent upon pursuing the Lord. Are you pursuing the Lord with everything that was within you? Because if you are, his hand will uphold you. Psalm 91 Verse 1 through 4. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. What does that mean? The snare of the fowler. There's an enemy that is setting a trap for us. There's an enemy that is setting a trap. And ever he's seeking to trap us. He's seeking to make us to stumble, to fall. But the Lord shall deliver us from the snare. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from from evil. Amen. We every day we should pray to be delivered from evil because there are evil traps that are set before our feet. There are snares that the enemy would like to tangle us in. There are there are sticky webs that he wants us to be trapped in, but the Lord shall deliver us and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. The wings of the Lord are shield for us. That's why we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We are mere humans. We're mere mortals. We can't fly. But there is a God that has great big protective wings and he says I want to cover you in my protection I want to bring you into my flock I want to give you refuge from the troubles of this world Hey, we don't have to live out in that dark and cruel world without any protection his wings are our shield his wings are our buckler it's in his shadow that we find our strength we can't look inside for strength the strength that you have inside of your own willpower will only take you so far your good intentions will only take you so far you can only walk so far under your own power and I applaud you for having willpower and a desire to do right but you've got to lean on the power and in the shadow of the almighty you've got to learn how to take refuge under his wings Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and I'm getting ready to close, Brother Nate. Jesus was lamenting to Jerusalem. He he had had it. He had had it with the Pharisees. He had had it with the scribes, the religious leaders of the day. In fact, he he spent most of Matthew 23 really letting them know what he thought about them. He excoriated them. He gave them 
what for, as my grandfather may say. <laughs> he gave them what for. And when you get what for, you know you've been got. Jesus let them have a tongue lashing in Matthew the 23rd chapter. Verse 34, he says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. So the Lord is letting them know, you're going to kill my disciples just like you killed the prophets of old. You're going to kill them. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone them which are sent to thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. If you're outside of the flock of God today, I want you to know that there's still a God that wants to shelter you under His wings. There's a video that made its rounds probably two, maybe three years ago. It's a fascinating little video. You should look it up on YouTube or wherever it is you watch those kind of things. You waste time like I do. In this video, it's fascinating. It only lasts, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds. But there is this hawk. How many of you know that hawks like to eat baby chickens? <laughs> That's what hawks do. In fact, my grandfather called them chicken hawks chicken hawks. Why? Because they they get chickens. Pretty serious thing when you got a farm and you're relying on eggs and chickens. You got a hawk coming. But in this video, there's a a chicken on the ground. This hen chicken has multiple little um, baby chicks. I don't know what do you call them things? Pullets? Pullets. That's what they're called. It's a bunch of about ten pullets on the ground. Yellow. Pretty little cute little things. Look like uh, those little marshmallow things you eat at at Easter. Peeps. That's what they look like. A bunch of little peeps out there. And out of nowhere, there comes this big hawk swooping in and lands near that mama chick, mama chicken and her baby chicks. And before you know it, that mama throws her arms out. Fluffs her tail, fluffs every feather she's got on her body. And she attacks the hawk. She go. It doesn't matter that the hawk is bigger, has a bigger wingspan, has a sharp beak, has mighty talons, can fly all the way to the as high as he wants to fly in the sky. That mama chick, that mama chicken was not intimidated by the sight of the hawk. She backs the hawk up into a corner on the edge of this hill and begins to peck at him. And I'm gonna tell you, feathers are flying. She gave him what for. She let him have it. And in the end, you see her chicks, she she gathers her chicks and they're under her wing and the hawk flies off. That's what I envision when I read this scripture. How often, how often I would have gathered you under my wings. I want you to know today that there's a God that will fight your battles. He will fight your battles. He will shelter you under His wings. But you got to be willing. You've got to put yourself in a position to be under His protection. You've got to put you and position yourself in such a way that you will it to happen. That you say, God, it, it's not me anymore. It's not about what I can do for myself. It's not about what I can overcome. It's not about how strong I am. It's not about how good I fight my battles. It's not, it's not about any of that, God. But I'm submitting to Your will. I'm surrendering to You. God, I'm casting my cares upon You. 
Because even though we can't fly, and even when we can't protect ourselves, and even when the world is raining down on us and it feels like it's out of control, there is a God who can protect us. There's a God that's saying, Come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Would you stand this morning? And if you have a care or concern in your life that's weighing you down, I encourage you this morning to give it to the Lord in prayer. If you've been trying to do things on your own and fighting your own battles, I tell you today to give it to the Lord because He cares for you. Amen. He's as close as the mentioning of His name. And He desires, His longing, His ever desire is, is looking at you and wanting you to come to Him. He wants you to give, you, uh, give Him his pro- your problems. If you've got something that you can't overcome on your own, He wants you to give it to Him. Amen. Why don't you raise your hands all over this place and begin to pray unto the Lord, mighty God.